Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Master of Punk's Tamer Sages, the King of Ring himself. But your boy Thicky Smalls, Jerome Michaels, in the house. Well done. Handled well. That was beautiful. We're live. We're live. We're live right now. We're on air. <laughs> Terrific. So I'm Gerard, um, and it's a holiday, and uh, we were with the Drinking Bros yesterday. I don't know if I look good or not, but uh, we have a very, very, very special show today because we have a guest, everybody's favorite guest, and our first ever three-time guest, the host of Chatting with Candace, Candace Horback. Huh? Yeah, 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 we yeah, can put him on. Yeah. Candace is back, everybody. Candace. Say hello to the gas digital crowd. Hello. Almost all of them will probably know you from your previous alias. Hello, everybody. Candace is back. Last time we we uh, we talked with you, we were down in Miami. Now we're here in beautiful Boca. You got two young boys chilling in the pool right now. It's a Labor Day. Living their best life. Living their best life, and obviously, Candace to our right, as always. Last time he zoomed in. Yeah, it's not the same. No, now no, he's no, no. here. <laughs> Can't have it. Standing over us. In all of his greatness, at six foot three, two hundred and six pounds, and every one of them is a problem. <laughs> the master of punks, the tamer of sages, the king of the ring, the CEO of the RNC, the future champ, Slick Mickey Gall. What's happening, Mick? Hello, guys. How's it going? How are we? I'm doing How well. How are we doing? I, I, good? I'm doing great. <laughs> I, I know it was a big... You got an open shirt and a pumpernickel bagel. It was a <laughs> big loss for you this weekend. So we're all pouring one out for, for the great one, James Buffet. Oh, uh, yeah. We should be having cheeseburgers. I've cheeseburgers. had cheeseburgers every day. And it, it's a Monday. Yeah. So come Monday. It'd be all right. It's not all right. Come Monday. I'll, I'll be, be holding you tight. tight. I spent four lonely days in a brown L.A. haze. Days. And I just want you back by my side. I look like I was drinking 8% of <laughs> <You> Bros <look. laughs> seltzers all day. You do, bro. I am. I'm, I, I'm, doing, I'm not going to lie to you. Struggling a little bit today, folks. But we're going to get through it. And, uh, yeah, those hard AFs. So, those uh, hard AFs. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Right over here. Oh, oh man. Little, give me a little. And a little uh, those hard uh, AFs. Too low. Bang, 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 bang. And for the people listening, there that's a is. hard as fuck seltzer. Hard AF seltzer. Uh, from the Drinker Bros. They're going to be with us on Saturday helping us with our first ever NFL picks. Big week here. End of summer. Beginning of fall. This is a transitional period, Kansas. What does that mean to you? Um, just pumpkin spice everything and mm. sweaters and wishing that it would get cold, but then that doesn't happen until December. Well, What's you the weather in, like in... Uh, you live in the Caribbean, yeah. so there's that. Um, it stays pretty hot until after christmas or like right before really? yeah we get like winter for two to three weeks and that's it and fall we don't really have jersey it's... gets all four seasons you gotta love that you gotta love that about jersey <sighs> I, you do. Get all four seasons seasons. One day. I miss seasons i miss seasons that's right you're a you're a upstate up, new york you're an upstate new york girl well i don't know if i would like i mean i spent some time there you're canadian and, and no yeah, you're canadian adjacent no 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 i miss the seasons for like Five minutes. And yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. This mm -hmm. is way uh -huh. better. Being hot. able to leave. 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's like, don't you miss it when it snows? And I'm like, no, because normally I had to shovel since yeah. snow. Yeah, that meant, that meant work now. for me. I do nothing. Yeah. I do nothing. I do it nothing. labor. La it's labor day. Labor day. And I've spent two years of no labor. Yeah. <laughs> labor free. I haven't raked a leaf. I haven't mowed a I don't know I if you get to celebrate that. Of, gla of grass, huh? <laughs> I don't know if you get to celebrate if you haven't uh, done that, any labor. No? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the rules. I, well, I, I, you've been in labor. Maybe that's what it means. Is this, is <laughs> no. this, yeah, well, congratulations. Shout out to all the shout mamas out. out there. Shout out to the mamas. <laughs> all the mamas who don't push a baby out of them. Yeah, shout out to the people <laughs> Thank working. Thank you for your labor. <laughs> Although we are we are working here on a day off. We're the, we're the <laughs> real heroes. That's true. So there's that. We're here. Yeah, Jim, Jim, what do you think the appeal of Jimmy Buffett is? There's some people, people really love Jimmy Buffett or really hate Jimmy who Buffett. Hates who hates Jimmy Buffett? Between. Who no, hates Jimmy Buffett? There's a lot of people JP. who hate Jimmy Buffett. There's a lot of people who, there's a lot of people, I, maybe it's not Jimmy Buffett so much who they hate, but the parrot heads who they hate. Maybe they don't like the whole, like, uh, kind of like the deadhead parrot head community. So what's up with, uh, so I was listening to, during my walk today, I listened to Jimmy Buffett the whole time, right, in memoriam. What's his deal with, like, pirates and sailors and 
stuff. I, I know you just said parrot heads. It's got to come from like a parrot. Mm -hmm. You guys know, I know he's got that song, Son of a Son of a Sailor. Right? It was like his grandpa a sailor or something. And that's why he... Because it got me thinking, like, think about like a pirate. Mm -hmm. Like a pirate, we like romanticize them. Mm -hmm. They're fucking rapist robbers. Mm -hmm. They lived on the sea and would hop on boats mm -hmm. and go rape and pillage and rob. Very anti-government and democratic. Anti-conformity. Anti-conformist. The king came for their head. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, you know... The same reason we, we look at mafia or the old west, or it's like you gotta have there's a there's a tinge of that call in the wild in like all of us, and yeah. it's like wow, good for them, they actually did it. Yeah, I feel like the rape was a little od, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, like guess. the Vikings and this and the stuff, yeah. like mm -hmm. like the mafia. At least they weren't you know raping. It wasn't oh. part of their like mm -hmm. code. Uh, how much know? of that is propaganda? I don't know. How much of that is is crown propaganda going? You don't. Maybe wanna, that's why they're you don't want to be a maybe pirate. Maybe butt pirates. They were just raping. You're the just guys gonna on be the other ship. so much rape. <laughs> yeah. That's what you want to do. You want to leave this system and go live in the Caribbean, all by yourself, looting and drinking and carousing and raping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's horrible. I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> I didn't like that bite of the bagel. <laughs> 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 It but yeah, I don't know. ASMR. I think it's just funny. It's like it's also that thing of like comparing like what old people did to like people in the yesteryear did to like compared to today. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With mm -hmm. all that, like we were talking about the Redskins getting their their name changed, the mm -hmm. Pirates, the Buccaneers. They're all they're all good. So. Oh God! The Vikings. You just Who did else? it. What's no, you just one? did it. You just gave you just gave these monsters an idea. What change them all? Oh, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it's gonna be like the, the Vikings the... are the cuddle bears. Oh my God! What did we do? <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> What did we do? The Buccaneers are the the sweetie sailors. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the uh, yeah, it's the Pittsburgh sensitivity trainings. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, maybe we're the Pittsburgh bonobos. The bonobos. You know, That'd be a good team. You know that that got me thinking about too. Uh -huh. So you know how like you uh like I talk about a lot like like we all like came from like like bad motherfuckers in our bloodline like someone had to fight to keep their bloodline alive and like you know what I mean like everyone's got that little warrior spirit in them. How many of our relatives do you think were also murdered? Like, for all we know, our great, 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 great grandpa could have had some kids and, and he could have got murdered too. Mm -hmm. So your enemies could be out there. The high likelihood. <laughs> they could be out there. There could be only one. <laughs> Speaking you know? of great, 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 great ancestors, what do you think? The first time somebody toasted Why are you bread. Your <laughs> first time somebody toasted bread and put butter on it. The very first time, the very first human They're like, Fuck yeah. to ever toast bread and put butter on it, they must have been like, the fuck did I just do? This is unreal. Yeah. You got Ooga Booga, come over here. You got to try this. Ooga Booga, check this shit out. Ooga Booga eats it and immediately goes, Ooga Booga, I don't like that term. Ooga Booga? Yeah, That's I know his you're name. referring to uh, Caveman. <laughs> That's his name. All right. What? Why? Why? I Mi just don't. Nicholas, what is Ooga Christian's Booga? Christian's over there you? giving you that. <laughs> what? What do you mean, Christian? What's what's? I don't know, you must have offended somebody. I didn't grow you up in Cleveland, Christian. So what's ooga booga mean to you? It's a it's no a, comment. It's a Cleveland term. Is it a Cleveland term? No. Ooga booga? No. I'm learning so much today. <laughs> yeah. So the first time, the buddy, right? Let's call him. Um, I don't know. Let's call him Ben. All right. Right. The first time, caveman Ben was like, <laughs> he put flour and fucking, you know, egg, mixed it up, let it rise. Where did they get the yeast? I don't know. Don't want to know. But it toasted, and then he's like, "Wow, this is this is pretty good. But it's a little bland. It's a little dry." Then he decided to step that game up and put some up on cream. And somehow, on that bitch. They, they, somehow they figured out butter. Somehow they figured it out, and they whipped this cream up into this beautiful gelatinous. I don't even know what this is, and they put that. Then he was like this: "Ooga booga!" Literally went "Ooga, ooga." Canceled. Can we see when butter was invented? Because mm. I feel like it was much later than the caveman. I agree. Really? Yeah. yeah I mean, I feel like yeah, I don't I'm like that up right now. If I was a caveman, Natalie, have you I would been not... here the whole time? <laughs> Eight thousand BC. He just, he just started the zoom late. Mm. I, I'm in. Hey. Yeah. yeah. If I was 8, like a caveman, BC? I would yeah. never figure this shit out. I would never figure bread out. I this is be... my point. Yeah. This is exactly where I was going with this. So Ooga Booga now eats that and immediately goes. Renamed. I gotta ben? fucking kill Ben. Nobody can know this exists okay. but me. I. Okay, the. No, nah, hell no. The first mention I need of to toasted bread make is make more in of the that. 1490s. Okay, what? so that's. Yeah. There's I'm putting no way. Ben to work. I'm going to be go. like, Ben, they had, they had, make more of this stuff. It's had, great, isn't it? They had pancakes in, uh, in Roman We're going to be times. rich. There's no way 1490 toasted bread. 
They had I know they they did like pancakes and honey as like a, a like... They just weren't writing about it, I guess. <laughs> I guess it wasn't that big of a deal. They're like, we can have, we there's so much butter for everybody. Ooga booga, what are you doing, you monster murderer? Yeah, ooga booga might have killed your great 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 grandpa. Ooga booga was my great 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 grandpa. No, that said, eight thousand BG before, before Gerard, yeah, that's yeah. right, that's right. I was I gonna say know. before grain. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> it's one of these things like you take for granted, but like, you know, they're like uh, when the Jews got kicked out of. Uh, Egypt or they left Egypt. They're like they made it through the desert for forty years. Dude, with calm nothing the but... Jays, please. All right. It's what offensive. should I say? I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> I'm That's what they are. I'm with you. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm just being very, uh, very uh, triggered. You're being very offended. triggered. Yeah. What, what's triggered? What's triggering is what people. I'm not sure whisper. what to be triggered about. Yeah. With I it, think with, I, everything. When they whisper like the Jews, it's like you can just call them the Jews, man. Well, someone like, went on a rant it. about that, and they said that you're supposed to say the Jewish people. Mm. I'm not adding syllables. Andrew Schultz, he solved this whole thing where he's like, listen, trans people, if you can come up with something shorter than tranny, I'll call you it. But you don't get to add things. You don't get to add syllables to a nickname. That's not the way nicknames work. You don't like That's tranny, funny. come up with something, come up with something shorter. Don't I, don't make me say the trans community every single I'm not gonna do it. This is not gonna happen. And it's the truth. I'm not gonna call them the Jewish people. And I feel like they don't want to be called the Jays. No, so, probably, probably yeah. not. <laughs> so, all right, hey, I was trying, guys. It was a, just a jumping off point, all right? Yeah, so, gosh. Anyway, they're like, you know, we made it through the desert with nothing but, but unleavened bread and butter. And I'm like, that sounds kind of cool. Nothing but saltines and butter. <laughs> not a bad, not a bad, not a bad combination. Get a little salted meat in there. We've got the makings of a shakuri board here, Moses. <laughs> you know, we get a little honey drizzle. Maybe we find some berries along the way. I like a good charcuterie board. You seem like a charcuter a charcuterer. Are you a charcuterer? I mean, they're okay. I want something more substantial usually. Your charcuterie radar is all is off. Dude. I'm off. Yeah, You're I'm, off. I'm struggling You're off on today. Your let me let you know what. Let me open hey, up one Smash of these. Smash Mouth died too. The Smash Mouth. Yeah, I just the saw that. The singer of Smash Mouth. Mm -hmm. Something that I'm a believer. Hey, now you're rock star. Can I be honest? You watch Shrek. You know his. Well, songs. that's the thing. He shit on the fact that everybody knows him from Shrek. So uh, he's out. He's out. Really? He shit he's about. He shit, he shit on, on Shrek. You're out. Shrek was a big thing. That Shrek's was a good amazing. Movie. Yeah, that was Shrek's a really good a, movie. Watch it back as an adult. It's I've, unbelievable. Like, there's more shit in there. Right? It's they got unbelievable a lot of stuff. what yeah. they what they put in the first movie. The second, third movie are also good, but the very first movie, mm -hmm. what they put in those movies. Watching it through an adult lens. First of all, when you're kid, older, watching like, it with your kid, I'm like, I don't know that he should be watching this yet. <laughs> I like, I know he's, he's not picking, not picking up it, it up, right? but it's like being downloaded on some level. Yeah, it's almost like the boys. Like it's like a Disney. Like the way that the boys goes after Disney hardcore. I can't believe Disney greenlit this. The whole thing is just a. It's it's just a giant satirical middle finger to Disney. Is that the superhero, but like a dark superhero? Have you not seen the I think, boys? I think I watched episode one, and then like the guy, it got real weird with like the main superhero and the chick. Oh yeah. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna invest my it's, time in oh, this. Oh, it's a lot. It, it's it goes there. Yeah. And, but for my make money, it feel a little dirty. Sometimes, it's the best yeah. written show on television. It's not for even real? close. Oh, it's the best written. It is the perfect satire of the last five to 10 years in corporate America. It is beautifully done. And they mask the beauty through the obscene gore and and, and violence. And they, it, it is. And, they, and each each season, they do keep upping the ante, too. So once you think that you've seen it, mm -hmm. um, there's, one, there's one guy who is their Ant-Man uh, equivalent. Yeah, that's the one I was just thinking of. <laughs> and uh, spoiler alert, he doesn't he's, make it. Or, or, or I should say his gay lover doesn't make his it. His gay lover doesn't make it. <laughs> and uh, we'll let you, if you know what Ant-Man is, and now we've just given you a spoiler oh, right there. Ant-Man equivalency I is no. gay. Have, have you seen it? No. What, what do you, what's your prediction? Oh, I'm going to say like he gets really small and goes up someone's butt. Ooh, close. close. And then gets Very big close. and the guy dies. That would have been. That's basically what happens. That would have been too easy. His penis. He goes through the urethra. Ooh. Yeah, what is yeah. that called? Like like sounding or something? Isn't like something supposed to do to the <laughs> sick and something in there? Google it. What? Google it. Why <laughs> do you think he was doing it? He was doing oh. it because he's trying to get. They're, they're getting something out of it. Yuck. Huh? Look, look this shit up. Really? Look it up. Come on, Dave. Yeah, see, I don't know if I want to watch that. That's a lot. 
Yeah. You're not into like gore. You don't like don't scary like movies, or Mm-mm. I don't no, really like scary movies. They're not good for you. You know, they actually lower your immune system. What? If you, I if you it. watch a, a scary movie, I'm like, it weakens your immune me system. How is that possible? Google it. We're we're doing so much good. Natalie, it's called sounding. Sounding. What's Nick, sounding? Nick Let's do sounding, sounding first. The pursuit of sexual satisfaction has led to an emerging practice among men known as urethral sounding. This practice involves inserting a glass or metal object or fluid into the urethra. The aim is to enhance sexual pleasure by encouraging your partner to explore your penis in several ways. Don't do that anymore. Yeah, I won't do do it anymore, I promise. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it's called sounding because you probably scream. (gasps) That just seems really dangerous. (laughs) He's he's making the sound. Yeah. Like, um, what if something breaks, or what if? I I think that's I read part about of the that fun. In a, yeah. Dude, oh. I read about that. The, that. I think that's how I first heard about it. The, the dude who wrote Fight Club. Mm. You, know, you guys know, know his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. But he wrote these fucked up stories. Chuck Palahniuk. Yes. Palahniuk. Yeah. Palahniuk. Palahniuk. Chuck. Something yeah. like that. There's one story where like someone was like was like jacking off in the pool and like put his ass on the on like the suction thing and like started to pull out his like his like <gasps> insides. Another one where a dude was like was like jacking off with like he like wanted to do that sounding thing. So but he, he didn't have like a device, so he melted wax from a candle and it broke off in there. Hmm. So then it was like uh, How's that come out? Probably surgery? probably a sober probably activity. Surgery. Probably a sober it's activity. It's gotta be surgery, for sure. right? Because if it's if it if cracks it, off, it's, yeah, you, you can't, can't get it dip out. Down, ugh, it's gonna stab shit. Mm. Oh. No bueno. I don't know. You know, There's I gotta, I gotta, too. I gotta respect the gay community though because they, they really. Do you think it's only gay men that are doing that? The Roy G. Bibb community pushes the limits, like bug chasing and stuff like that. Is mostly the gay community. It's bug chasing. Google it. I don't know. Trying to get, I don't a, think I trying to get a disease. Bug chasing? It's a, it's a, a party. It's like an, it's an orgy where one of the people has is HIV positive and they all fuck so so that they they can they can catch it and whoever gets the HIV wins the no way. prize. Yep. You what? win the big prize. You win, it was the big prize. Yeah, it's bug chasing. Swear to God, it's a thing. Why would you do that? They're like, um, you ain't gay like me. I'm full on. Yeah, age. they they uh, uh, they kind of like they alluded to it in the uh, in the original Blade movie where uh, you know the 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 humans would go with the vampires mm-hmm. and then like you know they they'd they'd want to dance and like seduce the vampire mm-hmm. and then you know be chosen by them and whoever whoever wasn't chosen to be a vampire was eaten. You know, so it's was an allusion to uh like the la bug chasing scene and and the idea from what they say anyway or from from you know how it's justified is is that uh to destigmatize hiv positive I people that's where you were and, gonna go with it you know but to me it's um i don't know it doesn't make any can sense I, can i weigh in on something from before apparently watching scary movies it's seen to boost your immune system ah I gotta say something. That Producer. makes no sense either. Producers, study. producers, stop disagreeing with us. Yeah. Whatever we say, it's you're just confirming it. That's right. From now on, <laughs> all right. Well, Jimmy Buffett sang, "Do you like you pina me, coladas?" Christian? And that's it. And he's still alive. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what, so the conflicting reports then are that it boosts metabolism, or oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's what my mind is. You wish. I know. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, There's an article that immunity? says that after watching horror movies, the participants' blood had higher levels of disease-fighting white blood cells. Mm. But this is only from one study. So okay. there's not, it's inconclusive. Yeah, there's going to be a lot that say the opposite, too, which is also why if you're um, like chronically sick or if you have cancer or anything like that, they actually recommend you watching stuff that makes you laugh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, That's what I like to your, watch. Patch Adams, twenty four seven, all day, baby. I don't like watching shit that makes me. Patch like, Adams not is feel such good. a sad movie. The end. Oh yeah, of course. Oh my but, god. Yeah, but just because you know, an apple ends up a core in the trash doesn't mean you can't enjoy it while you're eating it. Look at I me. I don't know this movie. Optimism. You've never seen Patch Adams? It's a true mm. story too. Which I think really? always makes it more sad. One of uh, it's really Robin good. Williams' better. It, it's one of his. It's right up Robin Williams' alley. It's it's half drama, half comedy, and he nails both both aspects of it. Really, 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 really good movie. What's your favorite Robin Williams movie? <sighs> Flubber. Being... <laughs> I did enjoy Flubber. Uh, Flubber. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. It's, oh, that's a good one. It's got to be Goodwill Hunting. I don't want to be so generic, but it's got to be Goodwill Hunting. I mean, he's. He's incredible. He's unreal. 
He makes that yeah, movie tolerable. If you watch, if you watch Goodwill Hunting, and fast forward through all of Robin Williams' scenes, that movie is intolerable. <laughs> Everybody in that movie sucks. Have you done that? Yes. What made you want to experiment with that? Because uh, there's this thing that you do. Big science guy. Well, <laughs> so when you're when you're like doing film or something like that, the idea of like making a perfect scene is if I watch this with no sound on. I should still be able to see exactly what's going on in the scene, right? And if I watch and if I listen to this with no video, I should know exactly what's going on in the scene. So, in order to improve yourself as a creative or a filmmaker, what you do is you take away aspects of things that you love mm. and you see like what they did and then you learn. So, you only learn from the score of the scene or the acting of the scene. And, you know, character development it's always there's an unbelievable believe it or not the people that are the best i think anyway in the world aaron sorkin would think it's aaron sorkin but i think believe it or not it's matt stone and trey parker and their writing style is to not use the word and then if you have to put the word and then in between your scenes you you're making a bad you're making a bad product. So I did. So I showed up to, you know, meet Candace, and then we got with Mickey, and then we went to the studio, and, and it's just boring. Who gives a shit, right? But if you replace it with therefore, right, or as a result of, right? So then you go. I met with Candace. Therefore, Mickey wanted to come, but there was something in the way, and then you can kind of anyway. Long story short. Making a very long answer to a short uh, question, forgive me. If you take out certain, like if you watch Big Bang Theory mm -hmm. and you take away the laugh track, it's unbearably bad. It's unbearably bad. So you get rid of the clutches. If you get rid, if you take out the comic relief of a movie and the movie doesn't miss anything, then that's a superfluous character. Like you could take out Jar Jar Banks. So completely superfluous. It does nothing. It adds nothing of value to the plot. No character development, no plot. The entirety of Goodwill Hunting, the entire humanity of it is Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. Minnie Driver is a is, she's a she's a, a wet napkin, you know. Matt Damon's just a just a sanctimonious prick, right? The uh, Peter Skarsgård is just an elitist prick. Everybody just sucks, mm -hmm. right? You know, even even his friends. You know, don't jerk off into my glove. They're they're fucking <clears throat> weirdos. What's your guys' favorite Jimmy Buffett song? So anyway, the reason <laughs> the, the 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 reason why oh you had more the, yeah the reason why the well you can jump in on the topic we're talking about Maverick <laughs> what are you fucking well, trying started, to do here it started out as a what your favorite Robin Williams <laughs> movie was and you've just gone you've talked about it for a long yeah. time so I figured maybe we we throw around a couple of Jimmy Buffets. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett's just died. Yeah. So right? when you when you sad. take Robin Williams out, <laughs> when you take Robin Williams out, the movie is the every character is unbe unbearable. There's he is the entire catalyst for character development. So there's that. Anyway, Ace, what were you talking about? Uh, Jimmy Buffett songs. Yeah, I love them. What's your favorite? Pirate Are Looks we, at can Forty. Can you answer this question for 15 minutes? Too? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The floor is yours. Do something with it. I'm throwing it around. The, Jimmy Buffett songs. I just said a pirate looks at 40. That's a great song, Gerard. Thank you. Great choice. Michael, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. I I'm forgot what I said. You can the name more than, than two Jimmy Buffett songs. I'm not like a huge Jimmy Buffett fan, though, so I don't know a ton of songs. Like, I know the top tracks, but I'm definitely not one of his followers. He's like famous for being famous. No, I know. Yeah. I mean, but it's just. He's got a good catalog. Yeah, I was surprised like, well, by how much I, I, I knew. Um, well, when we talked about this the other day, you said five o'clock somewhere. There we go. That's probably your favorite. Yeah, I think so. Margaritaville, obviously. Mm, that's mm -hmm. a good one. Um, son of a son of a sailor. I don't know that. Don't one. know that one. You guys don't know that one. Mm -mm. Um, there's one where he's talking about like you got fins to the left, fins to the right, and you're oh, yeah, the yeah. only bait in town. That's a different song. I think it's called Fins. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, cheeseburger in paradise. Mm -hmm. Cheeseburger in par. Paradise. No. You know, uh, there's a few. Uh, I'm you know, forgetting. if you take Cheeseburger out of that song, it's completely unwatchable. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> you had me for a second. I was like, what? Yeah, I like Come Monday, though. That's my favorite. Mm. You like Come Every Day. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's today's Monday, baby. <laughs> today's Monday. I don't know. We, we just had um, 
what was it, Saturday's episode, we had Mason on. What do you think about the whole... Um, Sexual transmutation? So we, so we had a, a, a naturalist who, um, entrepreneur, who was really, really gung-ho about trying to get back to nature. Mm -hmm. Went 181 days without masturbating. Doesn't think men should do it. Every time he feels the urge, he does 20 push-ups. And then, what was it? Transmutating sexual the sexual transmutation. Energy? So, yeah. like, when you and your partner come, like, you think, like, you almost, like, use it as manifestation. You think oh, yeah. about positive yeah. shit you want. Sex stuff magic. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah, sex magic. You sex fuck magic. with that? Yeah. It's totally, I mean, in my experience, in experience? <laughs> it's totally real. And I've done it a few what times. What type yeah. of experience are we yeah. talking like you about? Can do Let's it. get super specific <laughs> for our <laughs> listeners, please. So you can do it by yourself. And the idea, um, it it's kind of based in like quantum theory a little bit. Joe Dispenza does it, but he doesn't have a sexual aspect to it when he does his seminars. But it's moving um, the energy base from your lowest chakra your root chakra and the root chakra is associated with survive survival pleasure fundamental needs safety that kind of a thing so that's a lot of charge right which is kind of what it sounds like that other guy was talking about it's a, an energy to move sidebar what is a chakra different energy points throughout your body okay yeah it so kind of goes back into chi which we were talking about the other day too so the idea is we that we weren't talking the other day we right. weren't talking the other day. We're no, we weren't talking the, the other day. No. Breaking kayfabe over we're here. We're friends. We talk. So oh, yeah, when right. we were that's when right. we were texting, that's we were talking correct. about meridians and energy centers. But yeah, so the idea is moving energy from your um, root Loins. chakra, which is also like creative energy, right? You literally, we literally create humans through that chakra. So moving the creative energy from your root all the way up to your crown, and you do that as you start feel like to feel that build up you move it up you move it up you move it up and you move it out and then at your peak pleasure or climax it's when you send out your desires to god or the universe this is the thing that i want and then the most important part is afterwards like that come down it's like you lay there and you wait and it's almost like a meditation so you try to clear your mind like shavasana and just see what comes to you and sometimes you'll have like lightning hit and you'll have this idea or you'll have this creative um inspiration or you get a download or whatever it is but it's kind of like this aha and then you can kind of journal and you wait and see and i'm telling you when i have done it almost every single time the thing has happened now this is some manifesting i can get on board with but yeah you could do it together too and um <laughs> whoa 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 no thanks i mean oh, well you not mean, you oh, like right, right. With, yeah, the, right. with a lady friend if yeah, you like yeah, yeah. thanks yeah thanks oh. that's the way it works best i hear <laughs> No, maybe not for Christian. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey. Oh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, there's a lot of conflicting literature when it comes to like semen retention and men not orgasming because so Dr. David Lay, he wrote Ethical Porn for Dicks, and he said that the minimum amount of times that a guy should orgasm a month is like, I wanted to say it's like 23 or 28. And this is for prostate health. This is anti-cancer. This is anti-aging. It actually helps your t testosterone production. Um, Dr. Nicole Prousey is also a sex researcher, and she is a big advocate, advocate for men climaxing um she says that there's a positive relationship between that and an increase in testosterone and what's she, her name dr nicole prousey P well don't just talk about it <laughs> well maybe you could go and sign up for a research uh, session who was she the can sex therapist you. you had on chatting with candace she was crying I've had a lot. The last one you're talking about is uh, BB Brzozowski. Brzo yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. she's intense, man. You, the, what you said, she's I intense. told Eric what you said, and yeah. you're like, I think she's got. <laughs> she's a praying mantis, oh, and if yeah. you go under her bed, it's just gonna be bodies. It's and gonna I was be like, the, oh the my heads God. of all of her, of her ex lovers. <laughs> yeah, she's a black she's widow. Got, yeah, <laughs> she's got, she's got a. She got black widow energy. She's got a trophy case under there. <laughs> yeah, she's like, ah, her jaw, her mandible comes out. She's intense, man. That's hot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can tame her. <laughs> I, the, yeah, she's real dangerous. Maybe for a lesser man. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. That chakra stuff. I mean, he said the same thing. He said the same thing. The idea, hey, look, I just, uh, I, I, I don't know. I've never thought about anything in the moment of i just you know maybe next time i'm like try it and it, it sounds counterproductive like it's going to inhibit your ability to enjoy it or it's going to impede on your orgasm and it's not for me it actually makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. i don't but know I why like it would be. yeah it's like you're focusing on something else you're not letting your mind wander you're totally present because you're like moving energy up so you almost feel that, the moving energy more. up part i don't totally uh have a grasp on yet can you explain that a little more so 
as you get like aroused and as you're with someone like you start it's not just flat right like you have build-ups and if you've ever done like edging or anything like that right like there's this build-up and you can kind of bring it down you can kind of bring it down so it's that feeling of once you start getting turned on and you can start by just like doing you know just touching yourself on your arms like it doesn't have to necessarily be super explicit you take it wherever you and your body want to go um, but you'll start to feel like warm right and then you can feel that energy and you can actively move it up and so a a really good mm. mental exercise to do it if it seems um, kind of I don't know obtuse is like you picture two serpents and it's gonna be probably a little bit weirder for a dude than it is for a woman but you picture them kind of at your root chakra and then them like serpenting up through your body and it's crazy because when I've done this like you do like you feel this swirling kind of go up and up you want to focus up. it on those chakras mm -hmm. like kind of in the middle yeah, right. all the way As up. As it raises up. Yeah, exactly. So you do root, and most people like don't have all of them memorized. So you can do root, you mm. can do solar plexus, um, heart, and then crown. So you okay. can only do a couple. If you mm -hmm. want to time it up right, that you're crowning. When and your climax. Climax. Mm -hmm. All right. That'd be a lot better for me to think about. Well, that. I've got a lot of homework to do. Yeah, right. The whole time I've been having sex, I'm just like. Don't crush her. Don't come. Don't crush her. Don't come. Don't crush her. Don't crush her. Don't come. Don't crush her. Don't come. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about two serpents and this poor girl's gonna die. <laughs> so, She'll be fine. Yeah, but one yeah. of us will be, she and that's the only one that matters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she knows what she signed up for. Yeah, yeah, they got waivers. It's all good. <laughs> oh Consent waivers, you know, right, so, Christian? So, what do you guys think happens right. when you die? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm more and more. I think you just get spun right back up. Spun right back up. You what, respawn. What, do you mean? what does that mean? You respawn. Reincarnation. Yeah, more and more. I think so. Reincarnation. Like another person. A bug. Ah, that's the, one, bad, now, that's the part like... of it I can't quite figure out. Do uh do you like do you become a bug? And then we were talking about like what about an alien? If if I am a bug, that would make sense. Why they're so why they're Self-preservation instincts are so bad because if I was a bug, I'd be like, ah, kill me! I want to be something else. You're just running out. I want to be something like, else. Come on, come on, <laughs> yeah. spin me again. Yeah, like like I'm a, I'm a raccoon and I'm like, ah, I'm just I've been trying to run in front of so many cars. Why do you guys keep hitting your brakes? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. yeah, manatees, manatees keep going oh, into yeah, them. Well, it makes sense. Like that deer came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sick of fucking. You know, you know what he was doing. I don't want to eat shit up. another fucking acorn. <laughs> I can't handle it. I'm so sick of bears. Yeah. Why do these manatees keep Floating into the propellers because I don't want to be a sea cow. I don't want to be a sea cow. I think being a sea cow would probably be being lovely. Being a sea cow so sounds kind of Floating around, sick. relaxing, floating, getting some sun. Mother ocean. No real predators. Oh, sorry, mother, mother ocean. 